Another historic day for stocks Dow hitting a new all-time intraday high while the S&P 500 saw its 20th closing record of the year. The record rally coming as Fed Chief Jerome Powell told lawmakers he's optimistic about the economy and that, for now, rates are on hold. I think the new normal now is lower interest rates, lower inflation, probably lower growth. And you're seeing that all over the world, not just in the United States. You're seeing it to a much greater extent in many parts of the world than we're, we're seeing it here. Let's bring in Mark Cabana, B of A, Merrill Lynch's head of U.S. rate strategy. He just toned down his market forecast for the year. Mark, great to see you. Thank you. Um, you are at uh, 2%, correct, yes. for the year, year-end, right. 2019 on the 10-year yield. Um, in Powell's speech, it almost sounded like he was worried about um, deflation coming in from around the world. And I'm wondering how, how big of a concern that is and how you factor that in. Yeah, you know, I think that what we're hearing from this Fed is that they are hoping that they can keep rates on hold for now, but they're still worried. And that really struck me today in Powell's comments. He talked a little bit about he, how he was worried about downside risks to the outlook, in particular emanating from abroad. And I think that even though the Fed is telling us that low rates are the new normal and that they hope to remain on hold, that they're still worried that they may need to lower them again in the future. They're hoping that that's not the case, but they're worried about low inflation. They're worried about trade uncertainties. They're worried about global data, and in particular data coming out of China, which it sounds like today Chair Powell is indicating that he doesn't really trust. And so in that context, you're still going to have a Fed that's very cautious, very patient, and is going to be in no hurry whatsoever to raise interest rates anytime soon. How quickly do you think the Fed would react if we found out uh, that the December 15 tariffs were going to go into effect. I mean, if they're that worried right now about the potential impacts, if we see this hit, because it doesn't seem like the two sides can agree on whether or not there will be any tariff rollbacks at this point, um, are, do you think that they'll act right away? So I don't think that we're going to see them uh, lower rates in December. Which well, the would Fed be meeting right would be before, yeah. I mean, I right guess around we might that know, time. But... I don't think that, you know, any indication that they would be doing that or kind of preemptive move is likely. But I also don't think that at you know, the next Fed meeting, that would be enough to tip them into lowering rates. What they need to see is that this has a sustained impact on the economy, that there would be a hit to confidence, a hit to employment potentially, and they would need to see that l risks to low inflation increase before they would respond. I think the Fed really hopes that they can stay on hold, but in all likelihood, if they're going to lower rates again, it's going to be because they're very worried about a recession and they may be worried that they need to cut rates all the way to zero. We don't think that that's likely um, in the near term. And certainly you've seen data stabilize. You've seen central banks around the world sound a little bit more neutral, less dovish. You've also seen trade tensions, despite the headline ping pong that we see every day, they've ratcheted back to some extent. Mm -hmm. And that's allowed the data to stabilize a bit. And assuming that that is what we see between now and the end of the year and into the early part of next year, the Fed won't need to do much. But if the data deteriorates and we really see that it seems like recession risks are rising, they're probably not going to wait too, too long to respond. Equity volatility has a 13 handle on it. You know, we don't talk about it that much because the 13 is not interesting. Treasury yields, 10-year yields, has gone from three and a quarter over the course of the year to 147, back to 190, 150, 190. Bond volatility is probably at historic levels, and it's and in magnitude, it's much bigger than equities. Is that in and of itself concerning? Yeah, it is concerning, and I think it reflects a market that is having a really hard time discerning what the economic outlook is because it's largely clouded by uncertainty and a particular trade uncertainty. And that's why you see the market that's kind of chases headlines up and down and all over. To go from 325 into, you know, 150-ish level, you did see a meaningful deceleration of activity. You saw the pace of payroll growth slow. You saw the Fed commit to lowering interest rates and follow through on that. And that, I think, brought rates lower, and it's going to keep rates low for quite a bit of time. But a lot of the day-to-day -day gyrations in the bond market, it's really driven by a lot of the headline news that we see. And it's a market that's struggling to determine, is this economy going to recover and really stabilize and grow faster, like the administration hopes? Or is uncertainty going to push the economy more towards a recession? And I think that's why we see all this volatility. Mark, thank you for coming by. Thanks Mark for having me. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Um, stabilization of rates, though, that's a good thing for equities, at least for now. I think it is a good thing. It's hard to fight the Fed, that old saying, right? Because I, it's interesting. What are they going to do with the balance sheet? All of this is going to be easing, even if they're not cutting rates anymore. The, uh, the uh, interest rate forecast for the market was at 30 percent for a cut in December. Now it's down to 7 percent. So the market's OK with where rates are. And by the way, Powell just got on board. Lower interest rates, lower growth, lower inflation. 
You could have said the same thing in December, could you not, of 2018? Yes, you could have. I'll answer that <laughs> question. So, so you're playing with your, yourself. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's Thank a rhetorical you. game. I, pre- okay, I appreciate go ahead. it. So the markets, had, the markets, in my opinion, went higher once he got with the program and once he started cutting rates. And at this point, he's on board. And if he's not cutting rates, he's going to do something that is easing with the balance sheet. I think it's still easy markets for the equity market.